right, I have a sub here and it currently has these XLR connectors for the speaker. Now this has been superseded by the Speakon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these to the Speakon. Right, so what you need to do is you need to desolder this. Now, keeping in mind that uh, I don't feel like opening the whole sub and getting the woofer out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolder this and I don't want the wire to fall in there and I can't get it. So you could take a long nose pliers and just grab it from the other hole or you could do what I've done and I've just removed the handle. I just unscrewed the handle. Now my hand can get in here and I can actually feed the wire. So it doesn't matter if the wire falls in. But in your case, just be careful because if the wire falls in, you might have to remove the front or remove the woofer to get to the wire at the back and if you're wondering why I don't just remove the woofer while you see not all subs are easy to uh, disassemble have a look at this this is made by Fane Acoustics this is quite old it's an old design but a very useful design and look at all these bolts this, uh, it creates a vacuum here and a compression chamber this is called a dual compression chamber designed by Fane Acoustics and you can see that to take the, this out and to remove the woofer is quite a job so that's why I didn't want to uh, lose that wire in the sub box and have to take out the front subs all right, so I'm actually glad that I've opened this. You can see that was almost on its way out. It actually just popped off there right now. So this was a very tired solder. And I'm just going to, all right, so this is my soldering iron. I've set it to 375 degrees. Now, in my case, I know that this is the left and this is the right. If you let the wires just drop in, you might not know which is left and right. So I know this happens to be left and this happens to be right. So in your case, just be aware of which is left and right, otherwise you won't know. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the back of the speak on to just do a little template because I'm going to have to drill this hole a little bit bigger. Right. Right, just to give you an idea of the size that you are going to be drilling, can you see that is 23.37 millimeters? And if you're someone who uses inches, it's 0.92 inches or thereabout. Now, just be aware that when you are drilling this, the filings are going to go inside. So if they're going to fall on the woofer, I suggest you take your woofers out. You don't really want those filings uh, going inside there. But mine, my woofers are not in this area. And uh, this is a ported box. So what happens is when I put it upside down, uh, the dust, the filings will just fall out. So ideally, if you can, try and do this without the filings going into the box. What you could also do is lean the box at an angle and then let gravity push the filings into one section of the box. Now I can see my lines there, there they are, and there they are, so I'm just going to drill them bigger. My advice is every now and then just keep checking, you don't want to oversize the hole. Right there you can see the first side is fine now I'm going to do the same for the other side. Because I'm drilling this by hand and I haven't got a template here because I'm just widening the original holes, uh, it does stray a bit so what I'm doing is I'm just putting a line there showing me where the maximum on that point is and the maximum on this point point. and the reason I'm doing that is because you'll end up having that one sitting like that and when this one's in it might be sitting a little bit further back. You might find that one is sitting like that and it'll look funny. At least now when I'm drilling, I can see where I'm going. Now, this is super wood, so uh, it can peel. And this is very old and you can see that this box is not in very good condition. But nevertheless, don't just peel this away. Try and cut it rather than just peel it because 
you will event you'll just peel the paint away and you'll have to eventually just paint it. Can you see I'm just cutting this? And also when you cut this, it'll have a snug seal. Right, so there's the one. And here's the other. Now all that has to happen is you now need to solder the wires to the various uh, pins and then we just screw it in. Uh, there is a tip and that is, you see air can come through here, so if you want to you could, especially in an unported box, the sealed box, you could just put a little bit of silicone around there when you seat the connector. Now if you look closely you can see it says 1 plus 1 minus. This is the positive going to the positive of the woofer and this is the negative. If you are wiring it a, with a DVC dual voice coil, you can then make use of 2 minus and 2 plus. In this case, I'm just using a single voice coil and it is going to be two wires, 1 plus and 1 minus. Now my advice is to tin this before you bring the wires. Uh, it's much easier to work with a terminal that's already got the solder on. 1 plus and one minus. Don't hold the soldering iron there for too long as it will melt the plastic. You can see, don't hold it there longer than five seconds. One, two, three, four, less than five seconds. There you go. There it is soldered. And if you want to do it like a pro, you could even add heat shrink. So I'm going to show you two methods here. The one is just tape. If you haven't got heat shrink, you can just take some tape now and just separate these just in case uh, the, the one comes loose. All right, so there I've put the tape. And that's if you haven't got heat shrink. Over here I have heat shrink and a lighter. And on the other side I'll show you how to use the heat shrink. So that one is now ready. Alright, on this side I'm going to be using the heat shrink. So I'm just going to grab these uh, wires. And there you can see I've got the black heat shrink there. And then I've put the red heat shrink. Heat shrink is a product that when you put it over the conductor after you're happy, you light it, you heat it up, and the heat shrinks it as the name implies. Alright, so now I'll just do this side and then we're done. Right, so you can see there what you need to, right, so you can see it's soldered now, but what you must just make sure is that, this, you see the solder almost bulges at the back. You don't want the solder at the back touching, so you just got to inspect your solder. I'm just going to flatten it a little bit there, it's a bit fat. Yeah. Right, now as I said, I'll show you the heat shrink option. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the heat shrink right over the terminal. Right, there you can see the two heat shrinks and now all I need to do is light it with the lighter. I just need to heat it up. Just careful, this is plastic. So you don't want to hold it more than three seconds. Right, so there you can see the end product. You can see the heat shrink is covering the terminal. These are far away from each other. You can see I can get the entire screwdriver in there. So that is complete. The other side, I just use the tape. Obviously, that's not the best way to do it. Best way is to use the heat shrink. And now all you need to do is put these back in. But remember I said that sometimes you'll find that air can come out here. And if it's a ported box, it's not a problem. But if it's a sealed box, you might want to just put a little bit of silicone here. And I'm going to show you that now. All right, so I've just got some silicone. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit here, there, and here. And I'm just going to mush it with my finger. I'm going to be doing this side first and you push it towards the bottom right now you just want to check your wiring and you see that tab there that's telling me a little arrow there that's telling me the positive wire and there I can check it it's correct and there you can see the silicone now be very careful you can see how it actually puts itself on the wood so you're going to have to screw that in almost immediately and then wipe it off with a cloth now you can have your screws ready I'm just going to reuse these same screws 
that uh, really came with the XLR ones and I'm going to line this straight and it's best practice to drill a pilot hole because sometimes you put the screw in and it'll go like that so I'm just going to drill a small pilot hole quickly one and two and you can see that's a very small drill bit Now, if you're worried about the silicone, it's very easy to get it off. Just take a damp cloth and you just wipe it with a damp cloth. Right, so there is the complete job, and there you can see using the uh, Spicon. Right, there is the complete job, and uh, just some notes. One of the reasons why the XLR is not as good as the Spicon is the XLR can only handle 1.6 millimeter gauge wire, and you can see for subs such as this, this is 800 watts RMS, uh, you want to use a thicker wire. So the XLR can only handle about 15 amps, whereas the Spicon can handle about 25 amps per terminal. And what you can also do is you can wire one Spicon to feed two speakers. In this case, I already had two holes here, but what I could have done is I could have gone one plus one minus for maybe the top sub and one and two plus two minus for my, maybe the bottom sub and then use one speak on connector and some amps except that on one of the channels you can put it in bridge mode or you could even feed both subs via one connector in this case as you saw in the beginning of the video i already had two holes here and i don't mind this option so i um, i just left it as is